What advice would you give to a sister who desires marriage to protect her chastity? However, she feels she's not fully emotionally, mentally ready to adequately raise a child. No, my sister. You are ready to raise a child because your body is ready and your mind is ready. Why? Because you desire marriage. You desire marriage for two reasons. One is to protect yourself from falling into fornication. And secondly, that you wish to have children and to raise a family. This is what you have been created for. You know, you don't, Ramadan doesn't come and then you say to yourself, well, I really do want to fast the month of Ramadan, but I'm not mentally ready to go hungry for 14 hours a day. I'm not mentally hung ready for that type of hunger. So can I just fast for about three hours a day? Would you ever say that, my sister? Of course you wouldn't, because you know that, you know, we're not, take, let's take off our Western mentality hat and put it to one side. Let's embrace the culture of Islam and the heritage of Islam and the Sharia that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed. Allah knows you better than you know yourself. You know, a woman says, I want to get married because I want to protect myself from fornication, but I don't think I could ever obey a husband. You know, you're not thinking properly. You're not thinking straight. You know, I want to get married to my husband, but I don't think that I can be loyal to him. What are you getting married for then? You've got your priorities and your thought process is inverted. You're not thinking in straight lines. Think as a process. First of all, correct your mindset, your, your thinking and your cultivation. Correct it. Make your role model the righteous woman whether it be from the female companions of Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or the fem righteous females that came before them from the prophets who came before or the righteous females that came after the female companions up until our time and they are even in our time they are righteous women they are your role models what do they do? they get married they look after their husbands their husbands look after them they provide for them so the woman, she builds the home. That's her responsibility. She has children because her body is ready to have children. She's mentally not ready because she hasn't cultivated herself properly. So she's saying that I just want to save myself from fornication, but I don't want to have children. And I don't even know whether I can even, you know, be loyal to my husband or be obedient to him. Then you need to change that mindset. Turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Study your religion. Learn the deen of Allah. Read the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu Think about what, what, what is in store for you in Jannah. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself, when he said, marry the women who are loving and fertile. You know, we mentioned that hadith Last week, as I recall, regarding marrying the women who are al-wadud, that they are loving women. Those women who are loving and fertile. They are the types of women that a man should seek to marry. And if you, my sister, are not ready for that, then make yourself ready. How long does it take? To be honest with you, it can even take a day for you to change your mindset. It can take a day for you to wake up tomorrow morning, go to bed tonight and think to yourself, I will be a righteous woman. I will be a righteous wife. I will be a caring mother. You are ready to raise a child so long as you cultivate your heart and your mind upon obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
So this is what you should do, Barakallahu Fikum. In this case, would it be permissible contraception? No. That is not a reason for contraception that I don't want to have children. If you already have children, let's say you have two or three children already and you want to take a, a break of two years before the next child, and that is allowed as the scholars have mentioned, such as Ibn Uthaymin and others, that you, should you take a short break by using some form of contraception that is non-harmful and non-permanent, then that is allowed. And should a woman refuse proposals and withhold from marriage until she feels emotionally and mentally? Emotionally and mentally, you are a woman who can change that within you in a very short period of time. Look at these hadith that we have read. What is the right, what is the duty of the woman in this world? If it is not to raise a family. Did you not hear the words of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala? That after obedience to her, to Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, That she is obligated with obedience to her husband. That is the greatest right of obligation upon her. After obedience to Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So this is what I advise you, my sister. You know, rectify that mindset, rectify that thinking. And have children. Have children. But you have to marry the right man to have the right children. You know, you have to marry a man who's responsible. And that obviously, you know, I gave a khutbah yesterday about companionship. There is no closer companion that you're going to have and no in more more intimate companion that you're going to have, my sister, than your husband. And in reality, you only have that one man that you are so intimate with. So you have to make the right choice first time around. You know, this frivolity with which women enter into marriages. You don't follow up your references. You don't ask enough questions. You don't check the background enough of that man. Yet this is the man that you hope to spend the rest of your life with, 50, 60, 70 years, if Allah preserves you. And you may end up having six children with him. And he's a sociopath. You know, he has some sort of psychosis. He has some sort of mental, you know, something wrong with him. Because you didn't... You know, you didn't ask the right questions. You didn't ask the right people. The man that you marry should be known in his community, Salafi community. He should be known by the elders of that community. He should be a man who is working or is striving to work hard. He is a man who is known for truthfulness. He is a man who is able to provide for you as much as he is able, yani within his capability. He is a man who attends the conferences. He is a man, inshallah, who is not known to be rude or ill-mannered. Or one who looks down upon others or rejects the truth. He is a man who does not, every time, you know, he posts something, you see that in his profile, he's just got pictures of himself because he loves himself. Don't marry a man who loves himself. You know, don't marry men like this who show off. Right, because he's the type of man who will always be looking in the mirror instead of looking at you. Marry a man who is humble, shows humility. Respects his elders and his teachers. And they are not hard to find. Yes, it's possible that you may have to be a second wife or a third wife or a fourth wife. If that is the case, then make sure that he can provide for you. Make sure that he can provide for you and look after you. Make sure that you marry a man who has in his mind that I don't want to live in this country. I want to live in the lands of Islam. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the door for me, I will go and I will take my wife and my children 
So you need to be prepared for that also. These are righteous men. And they are available. But you need to ask the right questions. Ask the sister who is known in the community. Or even if she's not so well known, alhamdulillah, no problem. To ask her husband to keep an eye out for you. There is a Salafi group which is run by her sister and I think even her husband where your profile is posted and she's shared amongst Salafis without your name being mentioned with the telephone number of your guardian or your wakil who the man can contact because he will not contact you directly. So if he was to respond then you say, I want two written references from known Salafis in your community who are willing to write and sign that you are trustworthy, truthful, honest, hardworking, attends the durus. Not every single dars because that's not possible for everyone. But at least once a week that he attends a dars and he's diligent over his deen. Someone who can write a reference like that. These are important questions that we don't ask. Our sisters, they don't ask. Because they're eager to get married or they think that if I ask those questions that maybe he won't want to marry me, he's, he's going to think I'm too intrusive. No, you're not. If you're going to spend 50, 60, 70 years with a man who don't have a right to ask those questions, of course you have a right. Be diligent. If your daughter was about to get married, you wouldn't ask a hundred questions. The first man that knocks on the door, you're going to say, Khalas, come in, I'll marry you to him, boss. You're not going to find out where's he from, who's his family, where does he live. I've known sisters who have married a man and they don't even know his second name. In fact, I remember a case 15 or 16 years ago, a sister rang up and she said, I married so and so. And he left and I haven't seen him. I said, what's his name? She said, I don't know his name. I just know his kunya, Abu Abdullah. Bas, you marry a man, you don't even know his name. That is ghafla. That is negligence, inattentiveness. You're not caring. You're not paying attention. Sometimes we are, oh, we are our own worst enemies. Because we don't pay attention, we pay more attention to the sell-by date on a loaf of bread than we do to the background of our spouses. Be careful. Be diligent. Be aware. Not all that glitters is gold. Just because a man approaches you doesn't mean that he is the man for you. Never despair. Don't be desperate. Be forbearing. Be patient. Deliberate over the one that approaches you. Ask your father. Ask the elders in your family, your grandfather, your father, your older brother. They are the ones who will take care of these affairs for you. Inshallah, if they are responsible. If not, then go back to what I said earlier about the husband of a good sister within your community. Even though he is not your guardian, but maybe he can do some background work for you. And then he can approach your father for you and say, I have found someone for your daughter. And this is what I found from 